Odyssey is the 11th major instalment in the Assassin's Creed series that is set in ancient Greece during a war between Athens and Sparta. The player controls a mercenary who fights on both sides of the war with the true agenda of finding their family, healing the wounds of past trauma and hunting down those responsible. Like its predecessor Origins, the game features a huge open world jam-packed with things to do. Odyssey also places more of an emphasis on exploration and combat over the stealth approach from previous instalments before the series reboot. I'm sure that you have heard many conflicting opinions of this game, and although the size and some questionable mechanics may be daunting or off-putting to some, the game is fantastic and allows you to become fully immersed in a beautiful world and culture. Hello, I'm Heather at Amalgamingle, and today I want to outline a few tips to help you tackle this mammoth of an RPG based on what I have learned over the course of my own 200 hour odyssey. So here we go, here are 5 things I wish I knew before playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So first of all, the best piece of advice that I can give you straight off the bat is to take your time. Seriously, Odyssey is huge and is very demanding of your time and attention. When people say you can invest 50 hours into this game and still feel like you've made no progress whatsoever, they're not joking. Origins was huge, but that game doesn't even come close to Odyssey in terms of world size and content. There are several main story quest lines, absolutely hundreds of side quests that can feel long-winded, with multiple interwoven sub-quests, naval and land-based contracts, character quest lines, dismantling the cult of Cosmos, climbing the mercenary ladder, never-ending randomly generated timed quests, and not to mention all the activities outside of questing available, such as searching tombs and caves, clearing out bandit camps, solving Ostraka puzzles, finding sink points, hunting mythical creatures, conquest battles and more. Odyssey is by far the best game available in terms of value for money. It's very common for players to experience burnout. The number of times I have stopped and started playing this game because I wanted it to have my full attention but I got so worn out by its scope and size. It simply felt too demanding. Looking back I made one simple mistake. Rather than taking the game at a slower pace and just enjoying the exploration and beauty, I kept having long gaming sessions and turned it into an endurance sport of some kind, which led to skipping dialogue, trying to rush through quests in the main story, not paying attention, and neglecting to upgrade my ship and equipment. Now that I have completed the game at a slower pace, I now realise that my impatience and rushed way of playing really undermined the best things about this game. The reason I got burnt out is because the way I was playing was tarnishing the whole experience. No doubt learned behaviour gained from the heavily story driven RPGs and more closed adventure games I had been playing before Odyssey. Try not to make the same mistake I did and try to power through to the finish line as quickly as possible. Instead, mentally prepare yourself for the long haul and just enjoy free roaming around this breathtaking world discovering all that the game has to offer at a slower pace. The sense of discovery and appreciating the attention to detail put into the creation of my surroundings was one of the things I enjoyed the most about this game. Anyway, if you take away anything at all from this video, then this entry should be it. There's nothing better than starting a new open world adventure. You want to see and do everything before moving forward and if you're like me and play lots of RPGs and JRPGs, then your first instincts might be to grind and over level your now godlike character to make sure that you are more than prepared for what lies ahead. This is something I would highly advise against doing in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. This game features a strict level scaling system that cannot be turned off. For those that are unfamiliar, level scaling is the practice of ensuring the game remains a challenge throughout by making enemies level up in tandem with your character. There is an option to reduce the level scaling so that enemies are never less than 4 levels below you, but that makes very little difference. Ubisoft have never released a patch that allows you to completely disable level scaling, however they must have acknowledged the mistake since they did not incorporate a compulsory level scaling mechanic in Valhalla. I remember my first attempt to play this game. I stayed on Kefalonia and made sure that I did absolutely everything before moving on. I even fought lots of wolves to grind and rack up my XP. I approached the game the same way I approached Origins, where my grinding resulted in having a god tier Bayek. Unfortunately, I did not realise that due to the new compulsory level scaling feature in Odyssey, my efforts were pretty much meaningless. 
by the time I realised the game was actually level scaling, my character level and consequently all the enemies were far above my own ability and understanding of the game mechanics this early in my adventure. I also didn't have the necessary resources required to upgrade my gear to my current level and was therefore at a disadvantage from the get go. I'm so used to the concepts of grinding XP resulting in your character becoming stronger or overpowered, and as someone who doesn't really like a challenge in gaming, I like this system because you can control how powerful you become and how difficult enemies seem. But this is not the case with Odyssey. Some people who love a challenge will enjoy this feature, but for someone like me, the level scaling simply undermines any sense of natural progression and your character always feels slightly weak against enemies instead of feeling more and more powerful as you progress through the game. It's also very easy to level up in a game as big as this with so much to do. The best way I've found to overcome this is to always stay one step ahead of the game by continually ensuring that all your equipment is upgraded to your current level every single time you level up and invest in the best skills to suit your playstyle. Doing this makes combat feel much more balanced and it unfortunately does end up feeling like a chore since you'll always feel like you never have enough resources despite resources being everywhere, which brings me nicely to my next point. Something I learned a little too late in the game is that there are never enough resources. I have collected wood until I'm blue in the face and I still never had enough to fully upgrade everything at once without having to go back out and farm more materials. The game does demand a lot with each upgrade and with so many different things requiring upgrades, it's easy to run out of resources very quickly and end up back at square one with nothing left and needing to farm yet again. Luckily, common resources such as wood and iron can be found all over the world and they're easy to spot. One exploit in the game is that sometimes larger forts seem to respawn loot during your time there. I'm unsure if this is a common glitch, an intentional feature, or if it's exclusively to my own save, but I found myself going around in circles looting a single camp several times, wondering if I'm going crazy because I'm sure I've already looted here several times before leaving the fort. Do let me know in the comments if this has actually happened in your own save, because for me it was a saving grace. There are a lot of things in this game that need to be upgraded regularly, ideally in tandem with your own character leveling up. You'll find yourself pouring endless resources into upgrading weapons, armour and your ship. Weapons and armour need upgrading separately from your character, and if you don't upgrade them in tandem, you will struggle against enemies even a few levels below yourself. Once you find a weapon loadout that you really like, it gets easier to make them feel stronger, particularly with the engravings feature which grants special add-on abilities to bows and blades. Some engravings grant additional damage and some imbue weapons with fire or poison. The engravings can be very useful and be used to complement your playstyle. For example, I always choose Cassandra over Alexios because I think the voice acting is far superior and she's also bursting with personality. But anyways, I always make my Cassandra a badass fire goddess, where every arrow and slash of my blade causes flames of devastation in my wake. I also had a poison loadout, where my bow was engraved to inflict poison damage and additional headshot damage, and a spear was used to slay larger foes such as the mythical beasts and legendary animals. Your ship will also need upgrading regularly regularly to withstand assaults whilst traversing the open seas and to win conquest battles held on the water which can be challenging. I decided to invest in arrow damage and the ramming ability which enabled me to cleave enemy ships in half by ramming them at the side. Some people might decide to invest in javelins, the ship's health, stamina and armour or fire damage which again depends on your playstyle. Although Ubisoft sells a lot of cosmetics in the store that can be bought for real cash, there are loads of free in-game cosmetics available that can be found and bought within the game itself. I absolutely adore extensive customization options in games, extra fun skins and other cosmetics, no doubt due to my love of the Tales of games which really runs away with this concept and allows you to equip characters with ridiculous cosmetics like funny glasses, devil horns or an angel halo just for the fun of it, it makes no difference to the gameplay itself, it's just fun. In Odyssey, you can customise the appearance of your horse, ship, outfit and even your weapons and armour. There are several different horse skins that can be bought at blacksmiths around the world, including a unicorn skin and a pegasus skin with wings, which is very fun. 
and if you don't see a skin you like, you can simply fast travel out and try again until you find your preference, because the appearance of different skins at blacksmiths is randomly generated. The ship is also customisable, and you can find different figureheads and ship designs throughout the world. Some can be found in underwater locations, such as shipwrecks, and some are rewards for doing quests. You can also customise your weapons and armour to make your character appear how you would prefer. Once an attractive looking weapon or piece of armour has been discovered, you can simply customise your existing loadout to appear as though you have that weapon or armour equipped whilst retaining the qualities of the original weapon or armour in your loadout. Kind of like an illusion. For example, you might have a rough sword equipped for its 20% damage to Athenian soldiers perk, but you might dislike how the weapon looks. Not to worry, you can make it look like the champion's sword without having to switch over and forego this perk unless you add an additional engraving. This is a great feature which allows the player to always have the strongest weapon in their arsenal equipped without having to settle for an unattractive piece of gear. Also, trading in Oricalcum ore at a special merchant in Pilgrim's Landing in Focus is a great way to get extra cosmetics and special gear. Oricalcum ore is that strange green rock that emits an ethereal noise when it's close by and can be found dotted around the world. It can also be earned as a reward for completing quests from town notice boards or timed quests that specify Oricalcum ore as the reward. I mean, this isn't necessarily something you have to do, it is, it's merely aesthetics after all, but it does make the game much more customisable and fun. Right, so my final tip to remember for Odyssey is that decisions have consequences. In my first playthrough, I happened by a family in a small burnt down ruinous town in Kefalonia, cowering before some soldiers. Naturally, I went to see what was happening and was told that this family are infected with a disease and they had to die to prevent its spread, despite there being no way to tell if they were really infected. The family pleaded and claimed they were healthy, so I defeated the soldiers and let them go. Little did I know that this decision will result in Kefalonia later becoming a disease-ridden hellhole. In my second playthrough, I let the family be killed by the soldiers and Kefalonia remained disease-free. This is a prime example of how decisions can have big consequences in this game. Another example is when the cult member Crisis, or whatever her name is, leaves you inside a burning building with a baby. You can either save the baby and lose the cult member, or leave the baby and kill the cult member there and then. I have thankfully never felt evil enough to leave the baby to burn to death, so I am sh not sure what would happen if you did this, but I can imagine the confrontation with the mother afterwards would be unpleasant. But if, like me, you chose to save the baby and lost your shot at killing the cult member, then don't worry, she can be found in a later quest. I don't know for sure to what extent dialogue choices affect gameplay, but it is good to be aware that decisions do have consequences, so it's a good idea to choose wisely. And perhaps do some research on avoidable known glitches in the game. One example is a questline where you meet the Cyclops. You are supposed to find the Cyclops a friend with whom he can share his passion for poetry and fishing. When you do find a friend, you are given two dialogue choices, let's go now and join my crew and I'll take you there. Although opting for the join my crew option is tempting because it allows you to continue exploring the tomb, do not choose this option. I made this mistake and I couldn't complete the quest. If you choose this option rather than the let's go now option, which transports you back to the Cyclops directly, the friend will join your crew and you will simply never be able to unite the two friends. After several attempts to unite the friends, I did some research and discovered that unfortunately this is a known glitch that's never been fixed and stops people from ever completing the quest in that playthrough. So just be sure to choose the let's go now option and revisit the tomb later to avoid a potential headache. So there we have it, there's five things I wish I knew before playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey. If you have heard bad things about this game then I honestly think you should still give it a chance. I really enjoyed Odyssey and I even took the time and effort to get the platinum trophy despite the game feeling overwhelmingly huge and more demanding of my time than I would normally prefer. Overall, it was a fantastic experience. The game gets more hate than it deserves. So, if you are more than happy to sit down and settle in for a 200 hour game or more, then this is a great game to sink your teeth into. I've been Heather at Amalgam Mingle, and thank you very much for watching.